in the evening, as the first of Stacy's guests trod the red carpet leading from the curb to her front door, a fine mizzle was falling. Nothing, however, could dampen the spirits of those invited to attend the exclusive event that had flung the entire haute ton into rabid speculation over the past four days. Stacy stood in the middle of her front hall, greeting her guests and directing them into the drawing room, where the earliest arrivals were milling. While outwardly she maintained her customary polished façade, inside she was on tenterhooks. When she'd sent out the invitations, she'd had no idea the ton would respond with this much avidity. She'd expected Frederick's name to capture the attention and draw the required crowd, but she'd assumed the members of that crowd would display the usual level of ton curiosity, not this. This hugely amplified anticipation, as if each guest had been invited to witness some major, possibly shocking, certainly tantalizing happening. To her mind, the extreme interest bordered on the bazaar. She could only hope the entertainment they'd planned would satisfy such elevated expectations. Frederick had arrived early, bringing the three younger musicians with him. The four had taken refuge in her parlour, with Frederick declaring he had no intention of appearing until it was time for him to play. Stacy had been somewhat surprised at that, but had accepted his decision without quibble. Those guests she'd most wanted to attend arrived within the first half hour, a telling success. By the time the clock struck nine o'clock, her rooms were packed and she felt justified in quitting her position in favour of moving among the guests, stopping here and there to chat, and fielding inquisitive questions on all sides, most of which pertained to Frederick, but some bright-eyed young ladies, who, she suspected, viewed Frederick as far too old to be of interest to them, inquired as to the three younger musicians. She halted beside Ryder and Mary in an attempt to catch her breath. This. Mary informed her with a smile, is what wild success looks like. Ryder arched his brow cynically. It's amazing what tweaking the gossip mongers' noses will do. One could almost believe people were here to listen to the music. Stacy pulled a laughing face at her half-brother, then turned as her brother Rand and his wife Felicia, who was expecting the couple's first child, joined them. Her other brothers, Kit and Godfrey, as well as Kit's wife, Sylvia, were chatting nearby. Felicia squeezed Stacy's arm. This is an amazing turnout. You must be thrilled. I am, Stacy assured her, thrilled and increasingly nervous. To Mary, she said, Thank you for getting all the sinister ladies here. Even Helena and Lady Osbaldstone have come out. I couldn't have kept them away, Mary nodded at the crowd. Given the incentive to attend, I can't imagine anyone you favoured with an invitation wouldn't have made every effort to be here. Another thrill of nervousness skittered through Stacy. I think I'd better check on the performers. To make sure they don't bolt, Rand grinned at her. I know how persuasive you can be when you set your mind to it. But even I was shocked that you'd managed to get Albury to agree to a performance. His resistance is legendary. Yes, well, I'd better go and check that he hasn't changed his mind. Stacy laughed as she said the words, but as she wended her way through the crowd, leaving hostess duties to Ernestine, ably seconded by Mary, she found herself wondering just how deeply entrenched Frederick's refusal to play before the ton truly was, and whether it might throw up last-minute hurdles. She reached the front hall, nodded to Pemberley, Ryder's butler on loan for the evening, who was stationed there, then slipped into the corridor that led to the parlour. As she approached the door, she heard the plucking of strings and the rumble of male voices. She opened the door whisked inside and shut it, and met the arrested, questioning glances directed her way. Frederick was lounging in one of the armchairs, while the three younger musicians were standing in a group by the fireplace, Philip and George with their instruments.